Good morning. God is good. All the time. We welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The piece that you just heard is entitled, One Bread, One Body. This is World Communion Sunday. As we receive Holy Communion today, we will be connected with believers all around the globe who are also receiving World Communion, uh, Holy Communion during this time. It's a very uh, holy day and it reminds us of our connection with believers all around the world. We're grateful that God calls us uh, to be a Matthew 25 church, reaching out to the least, the last, the lonely, the left out. When you do it to the least of these, you do it unto me. Will you stand and join with me in the call to communion that you'll find printed in your bulletin? We're invited to draw near to the Lord and encounter his wonderful presence. In communion with God and one another, we find joy. The table has been set, the sacrifice made, the invitation given. Let us come before the Lord with thanksgiving in our hearts and ascribe to him all glory and honor and praise. On this World Communion Sunday, our hymn number 548, In Christ There Is No East or West. Heavenly Father, yes, throughout the world today, Christians are sharing in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And so we come together with an abundant table before us, a table of your grace and mercy and great sacrifice. Lord, we pray your spirit of love and acceptance would flood into our lives this day. Though we may celebrate your word, and we desire our hearts to be like yours, still we might harbor anger against others. We might act out of frustration rather than love. We hoard your gifts and might reluctantly share our bounty with others. So, Lord, we plead for your help and your salvation. Remind us again, Lord, that your love has always and will always be with us. You have called us to be witnesses to the good things that can happen when we follow your ways. You have asked us to reach out across our borders, across our fears, to others with the reconciling love of your Son, Jesus Christ. And on this day, Lord, we lift up those who are ravaged by weather across the Carolinas and Florida and elsewhere, those that are ravaged in war-torn areas. But Lord, we give great thanks for the many missionaries who are stepping up in faith to serve those in need of help. Lord, help us and give us courage and strength and focus for the ministries in which you have placed us. We pray this in the name of Christ our Lord, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We are privileged as a community of faith to be able to cooperate with God, His work in the world. Uh, we do that. One of the ways we do that is when we take the time to worship the Lord together in giving. Be mindful that your gifts, whether you use the e-giving tab or mail in your donation or use the baskets at the entryways, your gifts are making a difference. They're making an impact. Uh, probably in the forefront of our hearts and minds and our giving during these times has been the work of our United Methodist Committee on Relief and our disaster response teams that are positioned in every single annual conference and all across the globe because of the various uh, crises and disasters that have occurred recently. That's still the case today. Know that your regular giving supports that. I also know that if you would like to make a second mile gift, you can do that by simply marking an envelope right now, hurricane relief. That will be the next one uh, that's coming up right away, as you know. And, and already our disaster response teams and the United Methodist Committee on Relief uh, are on the scenes in all of those uh, very devastated areas. So know that your giving continues to make a difference. Our prayer cards are the blue prayer request cards there in your pews on Communion Sundays. Uh, if you make a specific request, you can bring that forward. You can place it in the basket here in the middle, or you can take it and lay it on the altar as well. Today, we extend uh, special prayers of Christian compassion and sympathy to the Ed Hammond family. Ed, longtime faithful member of Bridgeport United Methodist Church and very dear friend, passed Thursday. Uh, keep that family in your prayers. His memorial service will be later in October, so be watching uh, for that if you would. Ed Hammond stood many times in this church, as have countless other generations of persons, and affirmed his faith. One of the ways that we affirm our faith is through the historic confession of the Apostles' Creed. So together, this morning, let us say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our choir comes to share our wordy music this morning. You can follow along as the words are printed there in your bulletin. Let us come. Let us come to 
Will you stand as you're able for this morning's gospel lesson from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. be seated. I think all of us at one point or another in our faith journey have probably made the same request that the apostles made of Jesus here in Luke chapter 17. Lord, increase my faith. I may not use those exact words, but something along those lines. Lord, I need more faith. Lord, deepen my faith. Lord, guide me towards a more meaningful faith. Increase my faith. Perhaps the apostles were surprised at Jesus' response because he basically says when it comes to uh, sizing up your faith, if you had faith just the size of a mustard seed, that is one of the smallest seeds, if you had just that much faith, you would see wondrous things occur. Wondrous things. Friends, God calls us to a strong, vital faith that we are called to wear, that is, to clothe ourselves in every day. So what does a strong faith look like? A faith that we can clothe ourselves in day in and day out. Well, first of all, a strong faith is an altered faith. If you're going to be clothed in something, oftentimes it needs to be altered. However, if you're following along in the bulletin or by live stream, stream, you'll notice that I used AR, not ER, when it comes to altered. Because that's the beginning. It starts at the altar of our Lord, at the altar of prayer. Now, not, not necessarily the physical altar, but the spiritual altar. That is, that time and that place where you spend time with the Lord in prayer. Friends, that's the beginning of where God works and molds and shapes us so that we can have a strong faith that we can clothe ourselves in every single day. So in that sense, it is an altered faith. Devotional writer Carol Knapp tells the story of her father. Every evening before they would go to bed, he would kneel at the living room sofa, kneel there on his knees, and offer a family prayer for everyone before they retired for the evening. Now Knapp says, I did not maintain that same exact practice, but I always tried to maintain a vital prayer life and encouraged my children to do the same. But she said it was that image that motivated her, the image of her father kneeling at the couch every single evening. And then she made this comment, because whether you kneel physically or kneel before the Lord in your own way, I wanted to teach my kids to love God on their knees, to love God on their knees. She was saying that, again, the beginning point, the center point of a vital faith is that time of prayer, kneeling before the Lord. Friends, I pray that in your own life and in your own journey of discipleship that you are finding a way to cultivate that time of altar prayer, again, the spiritual altar, that time and place where you pray before the Lord. 
Some years ago, I read a story of some mountain climbers who were ascending the Matterhorn in the Alps. And as they summited, one of the persons, it was his first time uh, in that environment, and as soon as they summited, he stood up and he put his arms up in victory. But there was very gusty, very ferocious winds there on the peak. And so quickly, the leader of the mountain climbing expedition said, get on your knees or you're going to get blown away. Get on your knees. You're going to get blown away. Now, friends, I cannot speak for you, but in my own faith walk, it's been like that many times. If I don't get on my knees in prayer, there are many things in life that will blow us away. There will be many things in life that we will find we cannot handle. And the only way to handle them is finding that place, that time of prayer. In that sense, a strong faith in which we are clothed daily is an altered faith. Secondly, a strong faith is fitted for all situations. Fitted for all situations. The gift of faith that God offers us when we trust Jesus Christ with our whole being, regardless of the situation that may come your way, your faith is fit for that. Your faith can meet the challenge. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So if it's a time of heartbreak, your faith is fitted for that situation. It's a time of anxiety or disillusionment. Know that your faith in Christ is fitted for that situation. If there's a time of anguish, a time of uncertainty, know that your faith in Christ is fitted for that situation. Now, I've never had clothing fitted very often, but the one I remember the most is on my first circuit in Upshur County. I was working my way through college, serving churches, and uh, for you younger people, this will date me, but that's okay because I've found that styles come and go. But in the early 80s, what everyone had to have was a corduroy sports jacket. Oh, the corduroy jacket. Actually, it's cycled around a few times since then, I think. The corduroy jacket, the corduroy sports jacket that could be worn everywhere. Well, I had a gracious soul in one of my churches. He said, I want you to go down to the men's store. Purse Ross Men's Store was a, a men's store in Buchanan at the time and get one of those corduroy jackets. I went in and the guy measured me up, said, it'll be a few weeks, we'll have one in. And I got it. I'll never forget. I felt like a million bucks walking out of there. And you know, the thing about the corduroy jacket was you could wear it in all kinds of situations. You could wear it with blue jeans informally. You could dress it up with a tie and dress pants. To be honest with you, other than sleeping, I probably didn't take the corduroy jacket off for at least a month. <laughs> Only thing I'd ever had that was just perfectly fitted for me. And so I wore it all the time. I tell you that to say, that's God's desire when it comes to your faith. He has fitted that faith and gifted you, just for you, that gift of faith in Jesus Christ. And it is fitted for all situations. And he wants you to wear it every single day. Whether you're on the mountain or walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Whether your days seem bright and sunny or particularly cloudy and stormy. No matter the stage or age of life. He wants us to be clothed in that strong faith every day. And rest assured, when we place our trust in that way in Christ, that faith is fitted for whatever situation or circumstance we may be facing. Finally, a strong faith never outgrows servanthood. Never outgrows servanthood. Friends, we are called, Jesus himself said, I came not to be served, but to serve. So if our own Savior saw his role as service, why wouldn't ours be the same way? And that's one of the points of Luke 17. It's a major point in this passage of Scripture. Go about doing what you're called to do. It sounds a little bit, a little bit blunt, don't it? doesn't it? But that's only because we're not used to hearing it that way. Jesus is saying, you know, if you're a servant, you're supposed to be doing what servants do. So do what servants do. Don't expect accolades and recognition and all of these things. Just do what servants do. And we have trouble seeing ourselves as servants. But friends, the truth is the way toward a growing, mature, vital faith is more service, not less. Because why? We are following the example of Christ. 
and we are serving the world in the name of Christ. A strong faith that we can wear every day never outgrows servanthood. Had a colleague who tells the story of going to a very large church conference over many days, and during the course of that, they had uh, various celebrations. And one of those celebrations, they were celebrating uh, maybe a bishop's retirement or something like that in the conference room. And so there, there had been balloons and some confetti and all kinds of things that had happened at that particular gathering. He said he and a friend went out in the mezzanine for refreshments afterwards. And after they had stirred around there a while, they just kind of wandered back into the conference room, which now was completely empty, except, he said, on one side, he saw a custodian over here running the vacuum cleaner. And then he said his friend who was with him said, look at that. And he pointed over, and another lady on this side was sweeping up some of the confetti and picking up the, the, the leftover programs and all of the trash and putting them in a trash bag. And my friend said, yeah, so what? And, and she said, and he said, that's my bishop. That's my bishop. Really? That's your bishop? Yeah, over there, sweeping up the confetti and picking up the trash. My colleague said it just made an impression on him that here was someone who had you know, sort of risen through the ranks of institutional uh, recognition, if you will, as a bishop, but there she was, picking up the trash, putting things in order, whatever it was. And he goes on to say she knew what it was to be a servant. And evidently, based upon the testimony of the other friend, that was her model of life all the time. Friends, we never outgrow servanthood. If we want our faith to grow, we should be asking Christ each day, how can I serve you today? It's a wonderful breath prayer. Lord, how can I serve you today? And if we pray that prayer over and over again, I guarantee you that along the way, someone will come your way that maybe needs a word of encouragement. That's a service. Someone will come your way that might just need some affirmation or a listening ear. That's a service. Someone will come your way that may need actual physical help in some way that you can reach out and extend a hand of loving kindness to them. That's a service. Lord, how can I serve you today? Friends, a strong faith, a faith in which we can be clothed every single day as we size up our faith this morning. It's an altered faith. It's fitted for all situations, and it never outgrows servanthood. May God make us servants of Jesus Christ today. Amen. This is World Communion Sunday. If you're visiting with us, please know that the table of our Lord is open to all people. Actually, we'll be doing communion a little bit differently than we have done it recently. So all of us are learning today as we come forward. Uh, in just a moment, I'll have the prayer of great thanksgiving, but a word of explanation. You'll be handed a piece of bread with sanitized hands and handed a cup. You can receive that and make the turn here at the front. There are tra the, the communion cups are disposable. You can drop them in the trash cans here. If you go on to the altar and pray at the altar, after you finish kneeling at the altar, you can exit by the side hallways, and you'll also find tra trash receptacles there in which you can deposit your cup. Gluten-free will be distributed here on the piano side of the sanctuary, so have, uh, have great faith in that as well. Keep in mind that all people all across the world today are engaging in Holy Communion. It is our privilege. Will you bow with me in prayer as we have our communion prayer? Lord God, we give you thanks and praise that down through the generations of time, you have continually called to your people, offering your gift of faithfulness that we might be found faithful. Even when our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Lord, it is a gift today that believers all across the world are partaking of this holy sacrament. And as we partake, O oh Lord, may we feel our connection with other believers, some in situations of dire straits, some in situations of tragedy and disaster some in war-torn areas, but nevertheless, they will gather and receive this sacrament. Today, O oh Lord, we remember Jesus Christ on the very night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, this bread is my body broken for you. As often as ye eat of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he'd supped, he gave it to his disciples and said, this cup is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as ye drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. 
And so, Lord, in remembrance of these, your many acts of salvation in Jesus Christ, and in communion with believers all around the world, we offer ourselves again as a living sacrifice on his behalf praying that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us who've gathered here and on these gifts of bread and vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Looking toward the day when we will all feast together at your heavenly banquet table. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. One of the things that was helpful during the times of using self-contained was being able to extend the table to others. So today when you leave, we do have some self-contained cups at the back altar table that if you know of someone, a homebound person or a shut-in that you would like to take communion to, you may still do that using the self-contained cups that are at the back. As I mentioned earlier, as you come forward, you'll be handed a piece of bread and then handed a cup. Uh, you can make the turn here. You can continue forward to the altar. Remember our emergency fund basket that we use for uh, a second mile gift that we use for emergencies week in and week out. In the name of Christ, let us commune together.
Will you stand and join with me in the prayer after receiving that you'll find printed in your bulletin? You have given yourself to us, O God. Help us to give ourselves for others. Around the world, your love is working to make all things new. Empower us to be instruments of that love daily. In Christ's name, amen. Our hymn of response, number 547 in our hymnals, O Church of God United. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord on this day. We thank you for your participation, for your attendance, attending worship in today's culture, already as a witness to the power of God's kingdom in our world. Our ministry continues to go forward in so many different ways. Our WOW program for young people on Sunday mornings, our youth are, are gathering in, uh, in not only on Sunday mornings, but in the evenings as well. Our music programs with youth and children. Keep all of that in your prayer. Uh, also, if you know of someone that's in those age categories, encourage them to be a part of that ministry as well. Friends, we have been given the gift of faith. God desires for that faith to be strong, for us to wear it each day, and to serve in the name of Christ. In His name we go forth. Amen. Amen.